This is five on your side at four. Focused on you. Off the top at four, demanding justice after a local family's pets died while that family was on vacation. The pet sitter now charged with misdemeanors, but animal welfare advocates say it's not enough. Good afternoon. I'm Brent Solomon. Kay Quinn has the day off. The family considers this a horrifying case of animal abuse, and they believe the sitter should face felony charges. Tracy Henson picks up the story from St. Charles. Even though the building is closed for the county holiday, protesters still came out over the lack of charges. It shouldn't be a misdemeanor when you stab a dog to death. But currently, that is a charge against Love's stepdaughter and pet sitter, Alicia Mullering. And animal advocates are demanding more. She murdered a dog. Everyone should be outraged. We want the warrant reinstated. We want the investigation reopened. It clearly was not investigated properly. Love and her son want felony charges brought down on Mullering for the alleged stabbings of her cat and dog. Unfortunately, the people where it matters most, the people that can deliver justice, the people in this very building behind us right now, they're not they're the ones not doing anything. They're the ones that we need the support from. Friday afternoon, protesters followed a maintenance man into the closed government building in St. Charles. Police were called. There was some shouting, but the situation ended quickly. I hope that they see it as concern to you and I from moving on from pets to people. The defendant is set to make a court appearance in mid-January. In St. Charles, I'm Tracy Hinson, five on your side. And the St. Charles County Prosecuting Attorney, Joseph G. McCullough, said in a statement, this is a tragic and sad event. Felony charges could not be filed because the stage of decomposition of the animals was such that experts could not conclude beyond a reasonable doubt whether the stab wounds were inflicted before or after the death of the animals. Once an attorney enters on a misdemeanor case, my office does not oppose recalling a warrant with a new court date. We're learning more about a shooting that left a woman dead in North St. Louis last night. Police found the woman in her 30s inside of a home on Kennerly Avenue, suffering from a gunshot to the head. Authorities have not identified her. They are asking if you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 866-371-TIPS. You can remain anonymous. President Biden issuing 11 commutations for people serving long sentences for nonviolent drug offenses. A Missouri man is one of the people granted clemency. DeAndre Higgins from Kansas City was sentenced to life in prison. Now he will only have to serve 25 years. The president is also reiterating his call on governors and local leaders to take similar steps to erase marijuana convictions. Let's get to your weather first forecast now. Meteorologist Gary Frank is standing by with what we can expect this weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a busy weekend for people joining us and for people leaving us for the holidays. Welcome or goodbye, either one. But if you're around St. Charles, it's obviously a wet time. This is going to be a busy place, right? And I think this kind of shows it the best because people are walking around. You see a couple people, they don't need an umbrella. Things are drying out a little bit, although it's still pretty wet. And I think that's what we'll focus on is we've had a steady wall of rain, which has at times provided some actually moderate rain. I've seen a lot of people on that camera with umbrellas. Let's zoom into a few spots. This is the heaviest rain right now. It's in the Metro East. It's from Jerseyville all the way to Hamill and Troy. And then as we go to the back edge, I think there's showers like this from Rolla, Cuba and Sullivan. Otherwise, I think overall we're going to see some light drizzle in Arnold and South City. For the most part, though, temps in the mid 40s, and I think over the next few hours, showers linger at least for a little bit. I think overall, though, this weekend rain hangs this evening, but then it's a warmer and dry weekend for the most part. I think we're going to have a lot of dry time, but then we're still going to see a wet Christmas. How warm it gets, how close we are to records and where we were at least one year ago. All right, Gary, thank you much. The recent news of Nippon Steel acquiring U.S. Steel is getting the attention of the White House. According to the National Economic Council, President Biden believes the purchase appears to deserve serious scrutiny in terms of its potential impact on national security and supply chain reliability. U.S. Steel has a plant in Granite City. Congresswoman Nikki Bozinski and U.S. Senators Dick Durbin and Tammy Duckworth also sent a letter to Nippon still looking for more information on the deal. They say Nippon must, quote, have a full understanding of the company's legal commitments to its workers under collectively bargained agreements, maintain those commitments, and ensure that workers are protected in the next phase of the company's future. Well, our Way Forward series focuses on all of the organizations in our area and the impact they're making. 
This week, we're featuring the Miriam School and Learning Center. That's a nonprofit supporting students with learning disabilities. Our Justina Cornell takes us to Webster Groves. Oh, that is protect. Teaching them new words. Him won't you. Mackenzie Henneke's kids relax in this reading room. Both of them have autism, and so sometimes building relationships and friendships can be difficult. This is the library at the Merriam School and Learning Center. We're a school for children who are unique learners, so they have complex and mild to moderate learning disabilities. The educational nonprofit serves students from 82 zip codes, including the Henneke's. From therapies to tutoring, the organization aims to support. We're here to help you. You're not alone. That's why they want to raise awareness on ways to prepare for sensory overload during the holidays. Try to keep as much of a routine as you can. Mackenzie believes a plan is pivotal. Just talking about what we're going to be doing the next day or for the weekend. And giving a heads up is helpful. And it's also, you know, nice to be able to tell other family members, hey, like sometimes, you know, my child has a really hard time with lots of noise. So if we have to kind of get up and leave the dining room table, it's not because he's, you know, being disrespectful. He just needs an opportunity to kind of reset themselves. School leaders say these are just some of the ways they strive to serve. It's an act Mackenzie has witnessed and learned herself. We would be lost without it. I, I honestly, like, I think about where we were three years ago and I almost want to cry. It, it was just the amount of growth our son Jonathan has made in just three years and the fact that Ryland is now coming home saying he has friends is huge. When I had a child last year in second grade tell me, it's okay, mommy, I don't have friends. And that that's not an issue here. For more information on this organization and others, go to ksdk.com slash project five. Justina Cornell, five on your side. All right. Just